And what about MOTC? I remember we talked about that before, and you, you do uh, you do like that peptide quite a bit. Yeah, so I love the MOTC, and and actually this is one that was done in athletes before it was really done anywhere else. Um, with the idea that if we could increase mitochondrial function, you could increase performance. Um, and and so uh, so we really even started in athlete use before it was even widely available to the medical field. Um, and so I love the the, the MOT C. I think especially um, in theory, but I think that the practical application of dosing is sometimes difficult. Um, you know, know how much to dose and, and how frequently to dose. A lot of those studies really haven't been done to the point they need to. And I, I think that probably at the moment. Uh, people are probably uh, underdosing the MOTC, not doing it as frequently as they should or not doing it to the, the high enough dose. And I think that to get to a really great therapeutic effect, you probably would have to spend a lot of money um, to, be, <laughs> to be able to dose that appropriately. Well, what will be a really good dose then? You know, so I think that, uh, again, it's, it's all conjecture, um, unfortunately, because we don't have much data. The data that we do have is from, uh, for instance, even people like children who are developing type 2 diabetes early in life and then have suppression of their endogenous MOTC production. Um, and, and so, uh, so it's, it's, it's difficult to say, but I think that, uh, you know, whenever we rolled it out of TaylorMade, we were doing very, very light dosing um, and we were doing it three times per week. And I think that generally 10 milligrams even twice a day um, would be uh, more toward a dose that I think you'd start to see really good efficacy, especially even for performance. Um, and, and so I think that um, instead, one of my favorite products for mitochondrial benefit outside of the MOT feed, given those issues, is the SS31. Um, the SS31 is, is hard to find sometimes, but I, uh, I would say it, it tops my list of all of the peptides. Hmm, okay. Well, okay. The back to Moss C, the 10 milligrams, uh, the recommended dose I've seen was 10 milligrams once a week. So, yeah. So, what what and, is that doing then? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's certainly not hurting, right? I think that, that you know, what, what we know with the Moss C is that it's encouraging a lot of processes that are beneficial for, for as you mentioned, weight loss and also performance, you know, leading to ACAR increases, which, you know, increases mitochondria metabolic function. And so, um, so I think certainly 10 milligrams is, is nothing to nothing bad about that. Um, but I think to, to really see some of those benefits, uh, you would want to dose it much, much higher, um, wow. and much more frequently. Again, the half-lives of these things are very, very short in the case of the mod B even, um, once you reconstitute it, um, it, 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 de it degradates by 90% within four hours. Um, and so it is, uh, it is highly unstable, um, and quickly degraded, not just outside of the body, once it hits liquid, but even inside the body. Um, and, and so I think that, uh, uh, that dosing is, is, is probably a little low. <laughs> okay. So, is, okay. I've heard other things about the degradation. So, uh, but you guys have tested it in the, in the lab, I assume about the 90% degradation. Yeah, certainly. And, and, uh, there, and, and for what it's worth, that wasn't even our testing. That was actually published in one of the mod C papers, um, 90% degradation within four hours. Okay. I, I I think I've heard you know some other you know other opinions and some on some podcasts, but um, but you're yeah. pretty certain that that's the case because that that makes a big difference about what you give patients. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent certain. Um, okay, okay. Uh, no, yeah, no, no doubt in my mind whatsoever um, uh, about the degradation. I'll even uh, send you that trial um, okay. so you can see it. Mm -hmm. So do people feel a, um, you know, as far as energy level, because a lot of people suffer from mm -hmm. low energy um, by increasing their mitochondria function, do they notice an improved energy on MOTC? Yeah, certainly. So um, I, I think that especially, again, a, a good dose thing, but, you know, with the MOTC, you'll improve your insulin sensitivity, you'll improve your protection against diabetes. But I think some of the biggest things that people see is it, it's sort of like an exercise memetic. Because what we're doing, uh, whenever we, we give the mod C, we're then sort of starting de novo purine synthesis, which leads to a, a byproduct called ACAR. And this is ACAR has been a product that you've been in, in sports doping for a long time. Um, but because what that does is it sort of activates AMP kinase, which is the same process which is activated with exercise. Um, and once AMP kinase is activated, you can also activate 
something called PGC1 alpha, um, and that increases mitochondrial biogenesis. And that's really what we want um, because it's driving those cellular energy processes. Um, and so that sort of loop and pathway uh, is just sort of positive regulating. And so you'll certainly feel that in terms of energy.